But now let's, um, let's start with our first um, conversation. Now we see, obviously, Iran launched a retaliatory strike on Saturday night in Israel for its deadly attack on Iranian officers in Islamic Republic's embassy in Damascus after days of signaling it would do so. Markets um, trading in the weekend reacted. Markets like uh, Bitcoin, that one never sleeps. It did fall uh, to that 60,000 level. So now let's gauge um, uh, the expectations for uh, what happens, you know, going forward. Would there be escalation? What this means for the energy markets? Joining us now is Mr. Dan uh, Dikule, energy and infrastructure expert. He's also a former uh, special advisor to the Minister of Petroleum Resources. He joins us from our, in, from our Abuja studio. Uh, great to have you on the show, sir. Lady. Yeah, so the first, uh, the first trading day, yeah, yeah, good morning. The first trading day kicks off um, today, and investors have their eyes on geopolitics right now. So I'm already saying all prices could hit $150 on escalation right now. But Monday is starting off quite uh, stable that's talking about oil prices. What are you expecting? Could what, what are you expecting could be Israel's response to the attack over the weekend? Well, thank you very much. Uh, the, the 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 situation now is uh, it requires a very careful observation and careful uh, analysis because you can see that the market did not react spontaneously compared to what happened in 1973, 72, 73, uh, Israeli-Arab uh, uh, Arab war. You can see that the market over the years after COVID have strategically balanced, strategically balanced because of the, the, the rate at which United States of America is uh, been mobilizing to produce so much hydrocarbon. And you can see Saudi Arabia has also strategic balance in their production output. And you can also see Russia have reasonable volume of crude in spite of the escalation between them and Ukraine. So you can see that the market, today, Monday, you will see all the traders will watch pronouncement from Israel before the market, because there is reasonable volume of, of commodity in the market, particularly uh, crude oil and, uh, and gas. So that is why you have not seen sudden escalator, es escalation. So I, I believe uh, in, in prices, you have not seen a jump. So this is the situation for now. It's, a, it's still a very careful observation. Right, all, all, eyes, all eyes on Watch you know, major commodities uh, market definitely for this week and um, today. But w with the volatility in the global oil market, you know, with this you know, Middle East um, uh, crisis. What does this uh, pertain for, you know, the Naira? We know higher, good, higher crude oil prices, that's good, you know, for revenue for Nigeria, but that also translates to, you know, pressures of petrol, uh, petrol subsidy, you know, erasing gains, you know, on uh, Brent uh, prices. How are you seeing it? Yes, uh, Ladi, this is, the, this is why you need always to have business intelligence analysis. Because if this escalation now results into sudden increase in the price of crude oil to maybe $100, you will now see that Nigeria, two things will confront us. Do you have internal capacity to ramp up your production and sell more crude to the market that needs it as $100? so that you earn more dollars for your foreign reserve. And that will help you to stabilize the exchange rate at maybe 1,000 Naira to $1. But if you don't have this internal capacity now to ramp up your production and supply the market gap that this escalation may likely create, then we are back to square one. It means we did not build capacity in the past. So again, you are now going to import finished product, white product, for your domestic market because Dangote refinery is not yet producing white product, uh, enough white product to meet the market need. So that gap you are going to import, particularly PMS, you will import it at a very high price. So you will still pay subsidy, whatever name they call it, as the situation is today, we are still paying subsidy somehow. 
Okay, but I think President Tinubu is managing this carefully. So that is the, it is all boiled down to energy security and your internal capacity to respond to ex extrogenous issues like this war, pestilences like COVID. Uh, these, these, these are internal issues we need to re revisit and readdress quickly as a nation. We need to sit down and say, what do we have in stock? What do we have on ground? How fast can we bring it out? How much investment have we made in the last five years, six years, seven years into our upstream exploration and exploitations? So both for oil and gas, because you can see the energy security of the world, how it is balancing out strategic balance. You can see Europe is heavily dependent on America now because of the Atlantic Basin advantage. So whenever there is an escalation in the Middle East Basin, where used to be the main source of energy supply to the world. This is what you get. But America have strategically over the years, after from 1974 crisis, 1973, 74 escalation, to and the 1979 uh, Iranian revolution, you can see that America have ramped up strategically at home to make sure they are energy secure. Nigeria must look internally can we be energy secure at home? And can we have extra capacity to export more to end dollars to diversify our economy to agriculture? All right, talking about... So this is the situation. Talk, talking about getting more um, crude, oil, uh, crude oil out, you know, at this time. If you look at the uh, production in the first quarter, that's for Nigeria, uh, we see that January had about 1.42 million barrels per day. You know, that was, what, that was the output. And we see February... It's been a downtrend, you know, for the first quarter, 1.32 uh, million. That's for February, according to OPEC. And March, uh, that came in, that's the latest one, 1.23 uh, million um, barrels per day. So we've seen that downtrend, you know, in the first quarter. Um, that's for oil um, production. Why are we seeing this um, happen? And do you see this continuing into the second quarter of 2024? Um, I, thank you very much. I'm always very sad looking at these figures. Because why is it that instead of us to be heading for 2 million, up not, 2.5 million, why are we always coming down? Even though the technical justification for this uh, last month uh, performance is understandable that there are some maintenance and there are some uh, other issues that are holding down about 200,000 barrels. We come back to the market before the end of this month, hopefully. Hopefully, Nigeria is a, is a very difficult environment to predict. But it, it's very sad when you look at this figure. This country, our reserve is close to 38 billion barrels. Even our onshore reserve alone, we should be doing between 2.8 million and 3 million by now. So something is really wrong. And I still want to be inclined to ask Mr. President Tinubu to put up his crystal ball glasses, and look critically into the structure of NMPC and ask what is the problem? Why is it that you cannot increase production of crude oil? When you have all the reserve already established, when you have most of the field that have aged, but you can invest and revive them quickly. Take, for example, some OPL, some oil mining licenses that are in the hand of MPDC and the owners Ask, why are they not producing more than what they are doing? What is the problem? Where are the bottlenecks? So this is the issue. How can you use 1.2 million barrel a month or a day to look after 200 million people? Look, just look at the gap. So I think it's unfortunate that the cost center of this country today is the money you make upstream, you are losing it midstream, downstream. It's very sad. So now you, you take this one and relate, relate this output on a daily basis now to the energy need of the country, electricity. So how are you going to cross-subsidize electricity? Because it is when you make so much money from upstream crude oil export and gas that you can subsidize electricity in one way or the other. How can you subsidize agriculture also? When your any, your daily production from oil, that is your golden egg, uh, is, is so poor like this, 
So I think there is still a jigsaw requirement. I am not after any particular person or individual in an MPC structure, but I think that structure is weak and need to be resourceful. Something just has to happen. Why the president has taken this long to look into that place, we don't know. But whatever it is, I am very sincere in my mind. Something is really wrong somewhere. We need to look at it. So it's very painful to see that we have reserve, we have resources, but we cannot bring out anything reasonable. Uh, definitely, this, uh, this this plays into you know the the strengthening of the Naira. We definitely need to get more output out and, and enjoy you know some of the high prices we see you know in the oil markets at this time. But also got a report you know by uh, Bloomberg showing that Nigeria's crude um, supply for May um, loading has been very slow. You know to buy uh, to find uh, buyers um, so far with more than half of the scheduled cargoes um, yet you know cleared. What would you say is um, the cause of this? Why are we seeing you know, low demand you know, for these cargoes in the global market? No, don't. Yeah, no, Ladi, don't worry. The, the market at times can have some internal uh, issues. Uh, if you are involved in the, in the geopolitical and the geoeconomic zoning of the world about product uh, commodities like oil, if there are low at times for your commodity to get acceptance by traders. There may be reasons. What is going on in Singapore, what is going on in, um, in, uh, in uh, Switzerland, what is going on in, the, in, in some zones of the market may be the reason why there is no immediate trader to accept those commodities. But I can bet you, within this week, from what has happened between Iran and Israel now, you will see that those commodities, those, those uh, vessels, they will, they will get uh, off takers immediately. So it's not a big issue. That one is not a big issue. The real issue is how much volume can we take to the market to earn more naira and more dollars to stabilize our exchange rate. That is the problem. Because you cannot stabilize the exchange rate when your any in dollars is weak. You cannot. Because our demand, our lifestyle in Nigeria today is still largely tied to dollar. It's a petrodollar economy, whether we like it or not. Everything we use, including the channel on which I am talking to you today, they are driven by dollar. Everything, even the apparatus and all the garment of resources and material and hardware you need to produce the oil and produce food, is all dollar driven. So. Uh, don't worry about the cargo that is uh, hanging in the Atlantic Ocean or in, somewhere across the world. They will get uh, off-takers. Even those ones that are yet to leave our shore, they will get off-takers within the week. It's not a big problem. Right. The market has enough room to, to take. They may, we may only suffer a discount. We may, we may be forced to accept uh, uh, what you call forced sales value. They may just say, oh, we cannot pay you $80. We will give you... Seventy-five dollar. You you like or you don't like? You take it. But it's not an issue. That volume is nothing in the marketplace. Okay, we'll definitely keep uh, keep tracking that. But all eyes on, on geopolitics um, right now and how that's you know impacting global supply chain. We see the major trade routes uh, like the Red Sea is also you know heavily impacted at this time, and most of you know the refined products you know coming uh, through the, most of these corridors at this time. So. Um, talk to me about how we can hedge, you know, against um, issues when it comes to bringing in refined, you know, products at this time, and how, you know, our refineries here, like the Dangote refinery, you know, is playing into all of this. Yes, Ladi, I, I'm happy you touch on this very issue. The the you can see that the the Middle East basin, the Middle East basin, you can see that once there is a disruption in the Arabian Sea to, towards the Indian Ocean and towards the Red Sea, you know, largely, it means that situation is going to give advantage to the operators in the Atlantic basins. That is, the Guyana, the Venezuela, the Mexico, the America of this world. So every time there is a fight like this, somebody gain. The, the, the Ukraine war and Russia, America gain. They, they, they move all the gas in this world to the market in Europe. So 
Now that there's a little tension in the Middle East, which I believe is going to be moderated because of the strategic balance, Iran has seen now that there's a strategic balance. They cannot get massive support compared to the type of support and cooperation they got in 1972-73 during the Israeli-Arab War. Because nations have evolved, their socioeconomic status have evolved. So a lot of countries are beginning to be more conscious of protecting their citizens and their income. So I don't believe that this escalation in the Middle East Basin will last. But the temporary advantage is for the Atlantic Basins to fill the, the gap that the escalation may, may create in the market. Nigeria, do we have the capacity? We are back to capacity again to take advantage because we are lucky by geographical location. We are by the Atlantic. So we can move product easily from here to Europe without crossing the Red Sea, without going anywhere there. So it is only Pakistan, India, and the Southeast Asia that may feel something because what, what Qatar and Iraq and Iran are supposed to move may not move. So Saudi Arabia also may suffer temporarily. That is also the reason why all these countries may not easily jump to cooperate with Iran because their national interest, their sovereignty and economic survival is at stake. So the whole situation, let's dimension the win-win, not the lose-lose. <laughs> because right. everybody will lose if the whole thing escalates too much. Uh -huh. So uh, at the moment, let's just leave it like that. Nigeria, as you have said, Dangote will have an advantage because he's not bringing his crude oil from the Middle East basin. He's bringing his crude oil from America, the Atlantic Basin advantage. So he's pretty good where he's located. So he can ramp up production and supply the market. So why Nigeria, if we are not careful, our imported refined product, the price may escalate. But let's watch. Let's use this, word, this week to watch. Maybe by the time I'm back here next week, if you give me the privilege again, we may be talking in another way. Right, not it's definitely a, 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 a watch and yeah. a, a way to yeah. see yeah. Uh, moments yeah. at this time. And definitely this is playing into, yeah. you know, the inflation yeah. uh, story, you know, globally because we know with higher oil prices, uh, that feeds into inflation and definitely that kicks uh, the bucket down when it comes to rate cuts. Every investor is expecting, you know, rate cuts at some point. But we'll see how it all plays out. Thank you so much. Uh, it was great having you uh, on the show yeah. today and your perspective. That was Mr. Dan D. Kunle, former uh, Special Advisor to the Minister of Petroleum Resources and Energy and Infrastructure Experts. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Ladi. Thank you, audience. All right, so we'll take a quick break now. When we come back, we head straight to the markets. That's in a moment. Just stay with us.